This is a very interesting position. White's pawns are both going forward in this direction, and Black's pawn is going down the board in this direction. The question is, can white win? And if so, what is the winning move? If you'd like to pause and think through that, go ahead. And then we're going to talk about this fascinating position. All right, guys, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the answer to the question is yes, white can win. But the way that white wins is probably not what you are expecting. So when we first look at this position, obviously white has a very clear advantage of two past pawns that the king cannot stop. Like we could choose to push this one, we could choose to push this one, and Black's king's not gonna be able to stop him. So that, that's pretty straightforward. The problem for us as white is that Black has their own pawn and it is going to come down this way, and we can't guarantee that we will be able to stop it because if we try to make a move like king to d2, black's gonna simply mirror our king and support where the pawn is trying to go. Same thing if we move up, right? Black's gonna move up, and they can just keep doing this as long as they need to, and then eventually push the pawn, right? And we can't really make progress. We can kind of shuffle back and forth if we wanted, but that would just lead to a draw. The other way that you might think about this is what happens if we just do a pawn race? Like, what if we just push this pawn or this pawn? Can we not just win? Well, let's actually see what happens. So b4, e5, b5, e4, b6, e3, and of course we could use our king. We'll come back to that in just a second. But if we just go for the pawn race, look what happens. We get our queen. Black gets their queen. It is with check. And ultimately what's gonna happen is black's gonna simply play queen to e2 check, forking these guys. They're gonna take our extra pawn and this is a draw. Yes, we can throw in some random checks, but it doesn't, we, we can't force anything. It's an easy draw, okay? So if we just go for the pawn race, that's what happens. And let's check the other side. Does anything change if we play h4? Well, black's gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the pawn race. Here we go, all the way, all the way. We get the queen. Black gets the queen again with check. And this one looks a little bit more promising for white. Looks like, okay, maybe we can use our king to hide behind the pawn somehow. It turns out that we can't. And if black is smart, they're gonna keep putting us in check. So queen to f2 check. And it looks like we might be able to get out of the checks, but we actually can't. There's lots of moves that black can play. Queen to e3 check. And we can try to run, but I'm looking at stockfish. It's dead equal. There's lots of different checks. Uh, let's say queen e2 check. And ultimately, it's going to be a perpetual check. There's no way that we can actually avoid black's queen, okay? So that also leads to a draw. Now, if at any moment during the pawn race, let's just say b4, e5, b2, e4, we try to use our king, it doesn't help us for the same reason that I showed before. Black's king is always just one step away. They simply come up, and now the pawn is defended, and it's gonna be escorted down. We can't really do anything else with our king. We have to go back to the, the pawn race, and we end up with the same kind of situation. Black gets a queen, we get a queen, and ultimately it's a draw. Black's gonna be able to check us and, and we can't get away from the checks. So the, the big question is what else can we do? I mean, I basically covered all the moves, right? H4, B2, King to D2, like what else can white play? If you'd like to pause again and think through that, what do you think the winning move is? Well, the answer to that question is king to c2 is the winning move. Now, why is king to c2 the winning move? There's one very subtle reason why we have to play king to c2, and it's different from king to d2. Here's the reason. First of all, we are still threatening to go after the pawn. So, for example, if black just decides to push the pawn, we're just going to come up here and take it right? And this is an easy win. Now the king is too far away. We just go here. We take it. We have two pass pawns. Black can't stop both of them. Um, and we win. So that's pretty easy. So by going king to c2, we are in the same way as king to d2, forcing black to make a king move. Okay. So that's kind of makes sense. Black's going to have to play king to f2 so that they can keep an eye on our king. So if we come here, black's going to do the same thing. This is the exact same thing we looked at, right? Black's going to just mirror our king. So what did we accomplish by playing king to c2? Well, now we go for the pawn race and we push this b pawn. And you might say, okay, what did that accomplish? I'll show you what it accomplished. Our king is no longer on the back, on the first rank, which is huge because watch what happens now when the pawn race happens. We keep going, we get the queen. Black gets the queen, but it's not with check, okay? And on top of that, we have queen to g3 check, which is kind of the key move here because it forces the queen trade. 
Okay, so by playing king to c2, we essentially did two important things. We got our king off the, the first rank so that it wasn't check when black got the queen. And we lured black's king to the f2 square so that when they did get the pawn, uh, the queen later, now they're set up for this queen to g3 check move. So king c2 was actually a brilliant move, which kind of solved all of our problems for white. Even though we really did want to do the pawn race, we just didn't want to do it right away. And so now when we play queen to g3 check, it forces the king to move. They have to stay next to the queen. We trade and the h pawn is gone. There's no way that the king is catching the pawn. We simply get a queen and we win. So at this point, it kind of looks like the puzzle is over, right? We solved it. We figured out how to win, but not so fast. Black has a trick up their sleeve, which we have not talked about. And here's the trick. When we play the move king to c2, what I just showed you is that they can't push the pawn because we simply go and get it. If they play king to f2, we go for the pawn race and we win. But what if they play the move king to g2? And by the way, I should mention, if they take this pawn, we simply go king to d3. We're going to get to their pawn first and we're boxing out their king so they can't stop our pawn. So it's a really easy win. But if they go king to g2, this is an extremely clever move, and let me show you why. First of all, we can't go for their pawn, or they're going to f3 just like before, and it's a draw. So if we go for the pawn race, like I mentioned, watch what happens now. It's not the same thing. We get the queen. They get the queen. It's not check, which is good, but remember we, the, the queen to g3 check move, which forced the queen trade? We don't have it anymore. And that queen trade was important because without forcing the queen trade, this black queen is going to put us in check for forever. We're never going to have time to push our pawn and get another queen to win. Black's just going to keep checking us. So we have to be able to do that, but we can't. This is a draw. This is a drawn position. So what do we need to do instead? So going back to the original position, we play king to c2. Black plays king to g2. What's the winning move for white now? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is h4. And the reason might not be immediately obvious. So I showed you why it was a draw before. Watch what happens now after we get the pawn race. h5, e4, h6, e3, h7, h8, queen. Black gets the queen. And this is actually a winning endgame. But the reason is because we can force a queen trade. Okay, so if we can force the queen trade, this pawn is going to, you know, be gone. Black's king is too far to, to stop it. The question is, how do we do that? How can we force a queen trade? And so I'm going to actually just get you started because this is kind of a difficult one, but I'm going to give you a chance to pause a little bit later. So queen to g7 check is the first move, puts the king into check, and black doesn't really want to come this way because that makes it easier to get a queen trade. They want to kind of try to stay away from their queen and it makes it more difficult. So king to h2. We're going to play queen to h6 check. They're going to play king to g3. And the reason they have to come up is if they try to stay, like, let's just say here, we have a simple queen trade. We come here, this forces the queen trade. They have to take us or block and, and we trade queens. Same thing if they go down, right? We can come here, pinning the queen, forcing a queen trade. Okay, so because of that, uh, the only move really left for them is king to g3. And now we go queen to d6 check. They go here. We go queen to d3 check. They go here. And we have one final move that we need to make. What's the move for white? And this is not an easy one to see, but I'll give you guys a chance to try to find it anyway. What's white's, white's best move? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is queen to d4 check. And here is why. We are forcing a queen trade in the next couple of moves, regardless of where black's king goes. And it's kind of not obvious to see, but if you go back to the third rank, we have queen to c3 check. So for example, you move the king here, boom, forces the queen trade. Black has to take us. We take, we use our king to box out this, and then the pawn goes. So the king has to go up. And these are not as obvious, but if you go here, we have queen to d2, also forcing the queen trade. And if you go to h5, we have queen to d1, forcing the queen trade. So regardless, uh, we force the queen trade. And believe it or not, this is a winning endgame. And I'll just go ahead and show you that. This one's actually interesting because normally when you're calculating these pawn king and pawn endings, you want to check the little triangle here or, or the box. And if the king can step into it, the king can stop the pawn. So because of that, we actually get another sort of interesting endgame where the king is going to try to stop our pawn. 
And the important thing to remember here is do not push your pawn first. Um, because if you push your pawn too far, the king is just going to go capture it and your king is too far and it's a draw, right? So what you want to do is use your king to help. So king to c2, black's going to come over. Let's just say king to f6. We're going to come up. We're going to come up. And you want to get in front of the pawn as quick as you can. And ultimately, this is a winning king and pawn ending. The easiest way would be to go king to a6. You're getting ready to support your pawn. If they come here, you simply push it and, and you can escort it like this. And if they go try to block you, what's the winning move for white? Well, I hope you guys got this one right. If you've followed my channel and you know about opposition, you will know that the winning move is king to b6. If you make a mistake and play pawn to b6, now the game is a draw. Black's going to go here, and this just leads to a stalemate, which is not what you want, right? But what you need to do is get the opposition, and then you force the king out of the way with king to c7. Check. And you do have to be a little careful. You don't want to go here and get a stalemate, but you just push the pawn, and you get the queen, and you win. So pretty involved puzzle if we go all the way back there was a lot happening right um after this king to g2 move right this was a very clever try by black and if you just went for the sort of the default push the b pawn you would lose you had to go with the h pawn and then you had to see that there was a way to force the queen trade uh not that line sorry um which one was it king to g5 this one uh there was a way to force the queen trade but you still had to figure out, okay, how do you win this end game with, with the king and pawn like I showed? So hope you guys enjoyed that one. Very clever puzzle. You can show that to your friends. And I'm going to guess most people are not going to be able to figure that one out. So have fun with that. But I'll see you guys next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.